and a nice. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Alessandra, and nice to see all of you. Um, my name is Robjartur Arnason, Robjartur Robert, um, and I teach adult education in Iceland. And um, together with Alistair, so who is who is here, I've been working on collaborative learning for many many years, and he got me to to do this uh, this part of the of the session. So nice to have you here with us this time. Um, we I would like to we would like to. This is going to be a discussion, so um, I would really enjoy seeing your faces. We, 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 this, we need to be active all the time, so um, it's easier for me to, under, to see if what I'm saying is, is, is being understood and, and for you to be able to discuss, to talk together, etc. So to get to know each other a bit, um, I would really much like you to go, for those of you who just arrived, go back to this page where you clicked on go to event and open the three resources um, linked to this event. And the first one is an introductory map, and that's a map of the world. And I there are some pins. Here, if you zoom in, you can see red pins. Please take one and put it where where you live or where you are now. I'm in Iceland, and and if you're if you're staying somewhere else than where you call home, it would be nice if you took a yellow a yellow dot and put it where you call home. So just just for the fun of it. Some people are staying out, not at home, but somewhere else. So just to give us an idea where you are and where home is. You can um, you can move about just by clicking. Yeah, if you if you don't have a mouse, if you're using the the trackpad, you you it's a good idea to click in the right hand corner down and and tell the computer that you're using a trackpad by clicking here on navigation settings and choose trackpad mode. If it does. Uh, yeah, so you can choose between mouse mode and trackpad mode, and there you can see how it how this works. So you can take these red dots and put them where you live. There is somebody here, and so you put somebody put a yellow yellow. Yeah, you can take that away as well because. It's uh, someone in Singapore. <laughs> so you click on the on the arrow and just move on the, on the on the dot and move it to where you want where you call home. And of course, if you're, especially if you're staying somewhere else than home. Yeah. So we are spread around Europe and, and, and there's one in Singapore. Somebody's up here as well. And then, then. Could be Cambodia or somewhere there. Okay. Somebody need help or not?
not just so there's many people in Singapore. Ah. Who's from Singapore? Who are the Singapore people? Can we see you? Can you take the put the microphone and say hello and tell us your names? Susan, yes. Okay. And I can't see everybody. So when I share the screen, who who else is from Singapore? No? Only Susan. Okay. Um so <clears throat> Let's see. This is so we we have a group from from all over Europe and and some from from here from yeah this is must be Pakistan or what is that right? Yeah, exactly. Um, this is Pakistan. Yeah, wonderful. Um, thank you for this. So we we're from all over the place, and and we'll be working here for now, just about an hour. And I'd like to show you um, my plan for today. So I've, I've created this mind map. I don't have PowerPoint slides. I have a mind map. And on the right-hand side, you have green dots. These are materials for our discussion. And then on the, the other side, on the left-hand side, we have blue, blue um, areas, and they are practical tips and ideas. So you can click on these when you use it yourself and and open up more more information. And there are sometimes links, for example, that this is the link to to um, the uh, mural we're going to use for our group work right now. And I'm just going to give you a short overview. I'm going to talk about Learning is social. Um, we'll talk about communities of practice as one, one theory, one method around uh, think, to help us think about collaborative learning, and and then some basic ideas. There are uh, two two kind of theories: one from Lodkowski and one method from from Gilly Salmon called e moderation, which we'll mention. And then if we have time, something new, a book I just I just received, I, and I sent you the first chapter in this book called The Collective Spark, which is about kind of why on earth should we think about learning together. But um, I have a question for you, and that's what do you find interesting about the idea of collaborative learning? So um, I, without further ado, I'd like to um, send you out in, in, in um, what's it called, in, the, in your groups. And I'd like to send you in, in three person or four, four and four together and uh, just randomly and uh, ask you to, to uh, Talk about together what 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 you think is interesting about um, interesting about working you know learning in, in in collaboratively. Why is collaborative learning interesting? And what I'll be doing, I'll be I'd ask ask you to open up this this resource this. And there's a there's a there's a yellow area here, number one. What do you find interesting about the idea of collaborative learning? So you'd write your answer there in your four person group. So I'll again take the link here and put it in the chat if you haven't already opened. Already opened it. And um yeah. So I'll I'll be sending you to the breakout rooms now, and there'll be there'll be five break four breakout rooms with four to five people together. So please introduce yourselves to each other and and 
and work together. This is a very short thing, just five minutes. Thank you. So, so, Very quick. Should, so should we first talk or go to the board and do the written work? We could do maybe. both at the same time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Everything okay for you? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. You, start, you started the recording again. Oh, yes, that's good. Going back. So you came back already and you managed to discuss something a bit. Some people are, yeah, they'll be coming back. And then in one minute, in one minute, they're all coming. They won't have any choice. <laughs> so welcome back. And um, I'd really like to, to uh, for you to bring some of what you were discussing here into the plenum. So, so, um, group one, would you would you take turns and tell us a bit about what you find interesting about collaborative learning? Um, oh, I I can start. <laughs> I was one of one of the members. We talked a little bit about the um, the, the the good good parts of it that it's a. Uh, it's it's um it's a lot to learn from from others and you get a lot of different aspects of whatever you do um but also uh that it's different being a part of a collaborative work yourself and teaching it to student and and creating good collaboration um and groups among the students and that it's a it's a skill um Mm -hmm. that teachers need to develop to, okay, to, thank to learn. Mm -hmm. Lovely, Johanna, thank you. Um, somebody else from, from group one? Uh, I mentioned that I like the social dimension of it. Um, it's uh, more fun to learn in a community rather than by yourself, at least for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that, that's nice, thank you. Let's take somebody from group two. What were you talking about? Did you notice the number on your group? I think I was in group two. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, we discussed uh, how uh, when people collaborate, they still are very aware of themselves uh, as individuals. And uh, it also depends. Um, I had experience with my students who collaborated uh, uh, within a UGLO project, uh, Let's Talk uh, uh, activity, which required them to discuss with, with uh, certain topics uh, with students from different uh, countries. So they, they felt uh, some personal challenges, how to adapt uh, to, to different way of thinking, also how to, uh, if they are performing well. Uh, so they still had this uh, self-awareness, uh, although it was a collaborative uh, work. So that was one of the issues. You muted a bit. Uh, you cannot hear anything. Sorry, I, I I've got one of these, and if I touch it, um, it, it goes 
silent. So uh, could somebody from thank you very much, Dragana uh, and 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 from from group three, or was that group three? I, I the next group, one person from the next group. We can't take all of all of the things you discussed, but one more idea, please. Somebody from group three or four? Uh, if you mean the room three, so yeah, we should be group I mean, three. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean. Room. Yeah, yeah, we talk about uh, uh, several points. First is about active engagement because for like a uh, collaborating learning, it enables or it encourages like uh, active participants from all the, all the, should be not audience, but the students. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's uh, it's unlike uh, like uh, passively. I mean, passively receiving information, but uh, the student can actively engage in the discussion so that they can de develop some skills like uh, problem solving and critical thinking, and also uh, contributing to the group work together. So this can allow them to have deeper understanding of the materials or the the points mm -hmm. and also i mean through the collaborative learning uh everybody can can contribute to the teamwork so that finally the outcome can have diverse perspectives and also the students in the group can have like uh, support from their peers mm -hmm. so i think uh, uh from this point this also can uh, increase the motivations of the student to engage in the the work. So I think that's that's the very good point. And uh, so that I mean, finally, the target is to in to 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 improve the learning outcome of the students, so that they can have more. Uh, I mean, deeper like. Uh, 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 social interactions within the group. They can also develop their critical thinking skills and also have uh, some 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 enhanced learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, lovely. Lovely, thank you very much. Thank you. Yang, Yang Qin? Mm. Yeah, Yang Qin. Yang Qin, yeah. yeah. And uh, some of you are writing in the in the chat. So what is collaboration and the collaboration and cooperation? And somebody answered that. And then um, if we are talking about effective group work and learning sense, then I believe more collaboration is needed. Thank you for these. Um, in a way, yeah, you've mentioned most of the things, kind of come in to most of the things that I would like to discuss with you here today. And if I go to my 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 presentation, um, my main point is that learning is really social. And, and the thing is, we we are all part of a community and we it's the it's the way that we have have been learning most of the things that we learn so and and most of the things that are important for you in your life you learned collaboratively by course observing others by experimenting with others negotiating with others and and you create your knowledge through this discussion and negotiation with your the people all around you so we this is a way we are used to be to learn and um in a way we have for the for quite a long time we have organized learning events in such a way that it's it's the teacher who is kind of delivering information and expecting people then to go home and work with it and today when we can when we can 
deliver this information online with 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 videos and texts we really have to ask ourselves what what is the value when people come together at the, in the same time and in a virtual or a physical space and that's why working together learning together and becoming good at at learning and thinking together is so important another thing is um is that in through collaborative learning we are co-creating we are we are creating our knowledge and by listening to others by saying things by 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 kind of training ourselves to use the new lang new language we are learning you know every one of you is in a is learning in a new in a specific fields be it communications or or medicine or 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 languages everywhere you're learning a language and you need to master the new language and the students we are teaching they need to master their languages so so when we get them to learn together they are they are really training training their brain learning to use the the language and for themselves creating new knowledge and when they are so happy so lucky to be able to see other people learn they learn much more so in a way we could say when we have people learning together opening up your learning process for others is a generous act and it helps others <clears throat> to learn when they can see what you are learning and of course you you mentioned this as well using connecting our own experience to other people's experience um you mentioned learning through participation there are a lot of skills we need to learn for life and we can learn them through group work etc so we as teachers also need to need to organize the group work we create for our students in such a way that they also learn other skills and and you, you asked the difference between cooperation and collaboration um well cooperate is to operate together and collaborate is to to labor together so so um let's say collaboration is in more about the, the work you are working towards a goal together so that's why i use the word collaborative learning and so when you open up when, and you give your students possibilities to work with the learning materials in a collaborative way you're increasing the quality that's one of the reasons to incorporate as much collaborative learning as you must possibly can we have lots of theories which support this people have been writing about this all the last century so so many of them are really interesting there's one called situated learning from wenger and and his his doctoral advisor jean lave or lave and he also created the 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 idea of communities of practice there's a there's a method called communities of inquiry activity systems collective intelligence these are five of the newest newest theories on 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 the on social learning and if you want to check these out but what i wanted to talk about a bit here is 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 um communities of practice and and wenger says that this is a, really i'm kind of repeating what i said before it's a natural way of learning together we people who have something in common have a common interest common practice they learn together they talk about what they are learning talk about their 
what they need to, to do and they develop their practice together. So it's a natural way of dealing with life and whether it's the family or the school or the gang. So we do this automatically. Um, but when you when you learn about this and you have have uh, think about it theoretically and, and structurally, you 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 find out that when you're learning in a community of practice, there's a community and you learn through belonging. You belong to this group and by belonging to the group, you're learning. And then you also create an identity. I am one of the people, I am a, I am a, a what's it called, carpenter, or I am a computer specialist, I am a communication specialist. And you start talking and learning and becoming one who has this identity. And the learning also gives you meaning, what is, what, what is interesting, what is meaningful in life. So through this discussion, and so what we are helping our students do is to create an identity and a meaning connected to the stuff, to the um, content they are learning. And then of course, learning as doing its practice, we, we, we get better at what we do by, by learning about it together and and one one of the the practice aspect I think is is often we often forget it that our students they really need to practice using the ideas and the methods that we're teaching them if they are to 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 be become masters of that field. An interesting thing, and especially for us when we're talking about about collaborative learning online, is the the question of participation and within the field of communities of practice they discovered that some people they position themselves in the the circle of learners in different places so sometimes people they position themselves on the periphery on on the outer rims of the group so they're not very active and this often is 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 difficult for example you know you're in a webinar and and some people participate and some people don't and this is something Alistair and I have been discussing for for quite some time and we we together with some colleagues wrote a, a, a small booklet which is in the literature about silent learners you know how what happens when people do not participate are they learning are they participating um the re one of the reasons wenger and lave called it legitimate peripheral participation is that people choose their way of participating and the interesting thing is when they get in a new situation, they might choose another way of participating. So when you're out in the periphery in this group, you might be in the center in another group. So the question of, you know, where are you in the community? And then and we found out that people often choose to participate in different modes in different different um areas so um i would like you to discuss to go back to groups and and discuss a bit more and this time the question is have you experienced learning as social in your courses and seeing a course as a community of practice is that something which intrigues you, which you think might help you think about um, your learning practices? So if you, I'd like you to go back to this area here and, and there'll be 
a few groups. I'll 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 put you back in 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 in, in groups. There's a lot of discussion going on in the chat, and um, Alistair, have you been tracking checking on the chat? Is there something we should put in here? I know you're you're a kind of guy who multitasks, so no, I've been I've been watching and contributing a bit. So there's some very good discussions, um, very interesting. Should we bring it in the plenum, or is it just fine that should maybe get into the groups now and yeah yeah. Fine. So, so um, thank you for your chat, and I hope it helps all of you. And and but I'll put you in the groups now, and and then and then give you like seven minutes for this discussion, and and then we'll come back. So I'll just put you in the same groups to make it easier. And so. Let's say you'll take seven minutes for this. Yes, hello, you're all back. And I expect this was a bit too short. I, I saw that, um, that uh, you didn't manage to write all that much. Um, just just a small, quick um, uh, reaction. How how did you did you enjoy your discussions? Just a quick answer. How useful was it? Yeah, <laughs> yo, it was good. Okay, let's get some let's get some content from you. Let's start with with breakout room number one. Um, what were you talking about? Just, just the one or two things you were you mentioned. Can we? Do I have to call you by name? Okay, I'll take it. Um, the <clears throat> we talked about this competition versus collaboration, and how we are we are brought up to compete, and everyone has their own solution. Um, mm someone has to be the winner and the others are the losers. And that mentality is all through education. And so, you know, we, we talked about how universities could achieve so much more for society if they work together, but everyone has to produce their own unique solution, which has to be a winner. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we encourage the students to think in the same way by giving them grades. So it is a diffi it's difficult, but we also talked about how the, um, how we can widen communities of practice by getting students to meet students from previous year, alumni or um, even professionals and actually interact with them within the course, uh, mm -hmm. get views from the outside, realize that there's a whole global community out there that works with our issues and we can belong to that. And that can be a way of opening the door to the students to a professional network. Mm -hmm. That's lovely that that that's, uh, that you mentioned that because actually in one of the one of the lists on 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 quality in in online learning, this is one of the things that they recommend and they 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 uh, count count as as um, quality in online learning is the connection to communities of practice in the field so that this is very very a very useful point thank you alistair um can we have something from yes this is uh, group number one we also talked about what are students rewarded for and what are universities re rewarded for because if you if you benefit from individual uh, only individual grades matter students will work individually they will save time uh, for the individual work instead of uh, engaging in collaboration the same uh, is true for universities if they compete against uh, each, each other if they uh, gain financial you know support based on the number of students they have their ranking position and so on they are not so willing to collaborate but there are international projects where in various universities unite and work together but then they are rewarded for the uh, collaborative effort. So setting mm -hmm. the right goals for universities, setting the right goals for students, maybe could change the approach. 
mm -hmm. towards this more collaborative instead of more competitive approach. Yeah, th thank you very much, Katarzyna. Um, and this was very useful. And, and maybe I should mention here, I've been thinking about how to support my students to be collaborative. And of course, they come with this expectation that they are, they are to work alone. So kind of, I think I could say that my the most useful change I've made to my courses is when I managed to organize the course in such a way that they are preparing a big project which they return at the end of class and they help each other with each stage. So for chapter one, uh, they will deliver their draft and get responses from everybody else. They'll help them. They'll help each other make the draft better. And then they'll turn it in each individually. But they get, they're helping each other with their individual projects. And this has been, this has been one way of, 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 of getting people to, 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 uh, you know, work collaboratively. And of, of, of course, when you also have real collaborative projects where the result is owned by the group. So, so thank you for that. Group two. One idea from your discussions. Um, we talked a lot about how um, bringing people together to collaborate means bringing people with different brains. And on the one hand, this means different ideas, different perspectives, but on the other one, means different learning styles, different communication styles, and that might be a challenge on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about as teachers and as well as, as learners in our own experience um, that, you know, we, have, we might have different paces in getting information and in sharing information. And mm -hmm. many times society really um, understands participation and sharing of, of information as a proxy for competence, um, and and that is um, not the, not true, right? So many times people, some people speak a lot, some people not so much, um, and 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 this collaboration might it is challenging to have people with different brains working together in that sense. So. <laughs> So I, we, we thought about, we were talking about, you know, how can we provide different spaces, different ways, different times so that people all are provided with opportunities um, to share their own ideas, right? So that some don't dominate others. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, this takes, you know, always takes a bit longer than you expect. So... Uh, I'm sorry, I, we cannot take anything from the other groups, but this was, thank you very much for your input, and, and this was really helpful, and this, you know, connecting, when, when you say we have many different brains, and then we, of course, have to think, how can we work together in such a way that we benefit from having all these different brains working together? And... So, so that's what that's our our um, challenge, and that's where some of these ideas that I'd like you to read before we meet next time. For example, Vlodkovsky, who's a psychologist, who talked about you know how can we how can we um, motivate create motivating learning environments. So, what can I do to support? these all different brains to work together. And in, if you read his article, this link is here, um, then, then um, you'll see that one of the biggest thing is inclusion, to make sure that people feel that they are included. And, and then I'll, I'll, so, so, so we need to show all participants respect and create connectedness between all the participants. So that's one of the most important things. If you want people to participate, they have to have the feeling that they are included. 
And this is also what you have in the five stage model or E moderation from Gilly Salmon. And here she has kind of a, a ladder. She, she says, you know, you have to help people to access, to come into the room. You have to help them socialize. You help them start exchange information. You help them, and, and then they start create con, uh, constructing their knowledge together, and then they go on to develop. So the, these are some useful, useful readings for next time. And, and I also added what I'm reading now, a book called The Collective Spark, and there's a link to the first chapter, the, the introduction. So it's an introduction to a book. So a lot of things you don't really need to read, you know, who should read this book and all that stuff. But there are some ideas about why is it, why is it important to think together? And there are, there are two lists with, with what is a helpful, what is going on in a helpful, um, helpful uh, when the group is not working and when the group is working. So you have access to this mind map, to all the links and the readings are, of course, on the on the main page. So it would be lovely if you could ma read some of this and we could go a bit deeper next week. So uh, I expect that I'll have, we'll be discussing more taking more time for group discussions and and so 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 you won't be quite so frustrated from being of being called back from the from the groups and and you will have input and about what we discuss so I'll be that's my first question I'll be asking what should we discuss although I will be prepared so our time is up and and um uh Maybe you you would be so kind as to put in the chat, you know, what do you take with you from this session? One or two words. What what benefit do you take with you home and if, and into your reading after this session? So just put a, one or two words in in the chat, and I will just say. Thanks for now and, and good luck with your reading. <clears throat> and I look forward to seeing you next week. And Katazina, you would wanted I have to question. say something? Yeah. yeah. I want Go. to ask about the platform because it looks like uh, the one we the platform you used for, for your presentation. Yeah. It, uh, it's like Namu for the Dina. Uh, is it like an open uh, platform free or, or what? If we you mean to are you talking about the my mind map the mind map yours this is i this is created with a with a mind mapping program called mind manager yeah. and which is very expensive but i get it from the university but in my if you if you look here into the into the um what's it called the map here so collaboration where is it now and it's number three oh, with, a, with a group of, yeah, tools, right? Yeah, there, yeah, there's, this is so funny. Yeah, there, 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 there is, there's a link here to, here it is, this one. So, so mind mapping, there's a mind mapping software called MindMeister. That one mm -hmm. is, is a, a freemium model. So you can you can you can use it online and make help pe people can create together, but you can only create three maps for free, and there are some free mind mapping um, programs out there. Okay, thank you, thank you a lot. So um, thank you for 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 your reactions in the chat, um. I'll make them available on, on the website. I'll copy them and put them out there. And I really look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at the same time. 
and then you will have more time to discuss and and we will be able to discuss some of the readings and and i hope you will bring questions you know how does this what does this mean in university teaching i, I expect most of you are teaching in university so bring your experience into that too okay so uh, thanks for now and um Thank you very much. Have a nice week. Yes, and see each other next week. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.